So I've been a cord cutter for almost 10 years. You know, I don't watch television. I own a television, but I don't have cable is what I'm trying to say. But on Thanksgiving, I was at my mom's house and she had the TV on. And even though we weren't really paying attention, I did notice that within the span of a half an hour, there were only two political ads that came on. There were presidential campaign ads for Tom Steyer and Mike Bloomberg, the two billionaires that are running for president. And really, that fact shouldn't be lost on anyone. We should never not be outraged about the fact that we have not one, but two billionaires currently trying to buy the nomination. And the way that they're trying to buy the nomination is by flooding media markets, right? Overwhelming everyone, all the other candidates spending more than them, so that way they overcome the obstacle that a lot of politicians face, name recognition. So if they just blast the airwaves with their ads again and again and again, run ads through TV and Facebook, then they believe that they can boost their name enough to end up winning. They are effectively buying the nomination. It's dangerous. This really... It's not good for democracy. It's not democracy. It's anti antithetical to democracy to have two billionaires trying to do this. Um, but one thing that I am delighted to learn is that buying the nomination isn't as easy as I initially thought. Because what's happening is we're seeing this backfire on at least one of them. So Tom Steyer is overwhelming the media market in New Hampshire, which obviously is an early primary state. Very important. And it's gotten to the point where he has run so many ads that people hate him there. They're literally getting annoyed by the ads that he's running. And he's making a joke of himself because it reeks of desperation, not political savviness. So, in an article by Politico's Trent Spiner, he writes, Maggie and Libby knew Tom Steyer's ad by heart. I'm going to say two words that will make Washington insiders very uncomfortable. Term limits. They recently chirped in unison at the dinner table. Unfortunately for Steyer, their votes can't be bought. They're 10 and 13. It was like a comedy act, the children's father, Lauren Fox, said. His ads are on constantly. Some Granite Staters said they're seeing Steyer's ads dozens of times a day, and it's becoming more grating than ingratiating. A Politico reporter who watched YouTube music videos this week by Pentatonix, a popular a cappella group, endured 17 Steyer ads in just over an hour. Even some of Steyer's local staff privately acknowledged the volume of ads has gone overboard. Steyer has massively outspent other Democratic candidates on social media in an effort to gain traction in polls and ensure he makes the debate stage. But the recoiling of some New Hampshire voters suggests there are limits to the strategy. Michael Bloomberg, beware. Indeed, some residents feel like they can't touch a piece of technology without seeing his face. There is a point of no return in terms of visibility, said Scott Spradling, a New Hampshire media analyst. At some point, you become the uninvited guest. He uniquely is becoming dangerously close. Steyer was asked directly in a recent radio interview whether he's past the point of saturation to annoyance. Quote, if people actually hear my message, they do respond. Steyer replied, I'm someone who people don't know anything about and trying to make a very specific point and introduce myself. So I love this story because it has make it stop in the headline because that's what people in New Hampshire are saying. Like, can you imagine like political ads are annoying as it is? And I'm in Oregon where, you know, one of the later states in the primary process, but political ads are annoying. But if you are in one of these early primary states, how obnoxious that would be. Especially, especially during, you know, presidential campaign years, that would just be insufferable. I wouldn't be able to watch TV. Um, so the fact that it's actually backfiring makes me feel a little bit of, uh, you know, a, a glimmer of hope. We'll say that cautiously optimistic because I don't want to be too optimistic because our democracy is technically dying because we have billionaires running. But the fact that people aren't warming up to these billionaires and the fact that they're having a more difficult time than I suspected initially buying the nomination, it does make me feel, you know, a little bit better about this. Now, if you actually look at the numbers, like the money he's spending, it really is insane. So far, he spent $55.6 million on advertising nationally and $6.5 million on Facebook alone in the last three months. Now, overall, he even outspent Donald Trump by $700,000. Let me restate that. 
he outspent the incumbent president in advertising by almost a million dollars. That is insane. And uh, what has this gotten him so far? Well, nationally, he is polling at 1.6%. In Iowa, he's polling at 2.3%. And in New Hampshire, he's polling at 3.3%. Um, so not great, but he did just qualify for the uh, December debate. So he may not be able to buy the nomination so easily, but he is buying his way onto the debate stage. And this is someone who doesn't have any ideas. His big idea is term limits. Okay, great. I support term limits, but that isn't the biggest issue. The biggest issue is corruption in politics. It's capitalism in every sector of society, healthcare, education. This is an individual who doesn't know anything because he's a billionaire, he's out of touch, and he can't possibly represent the American people because he doesn't know about their struggles. He doesn't know what he stands for. He just wants power. Like, if you are a billionaire and you think that the best way to help if you believe the country is in a bad state is to run for president and not fund some sort of charity or other congressional campaigns, then it just goes to show that you care more about yourself and your ego than actually fixing the problems that America faces, right? If he truly cared about corruption in America, if he truly was dissatisfied with the establishment, he can use his money to create organizations and programs that combats the establishment's influence. But he's not doing that because he cares about himself. And even if he's a billionaire already, like... People need to realize that power in and of itself is alluring. It's why people like Donald Trump, who was a billionaire, Michael Bloomberg, who is a billionaire, they still want more power, even though they have more money than they'll be able to spend in their lifetime. Well, they got everything with regard to money, so now they want to seek out a different type of vice, power. So that's what this is about. But look, at the end of the day, I'm really happy that this is backfiring and that Tom Steyer is flooding the market so much that he is oversaturating it and annoying the shit out of people. This is good news because we don't want their message to resonate and we want them to have whatever money they're spending be wasted because it needs to be very clear in this country that billionaires cannot buy elections. They're already buying elections indirectly by funding puppets, by you know making these campaign contributions to politicians in both parties, but they certainly should not be able to just buy a position of power themselves Betsy DeVos already did that by, you know, donating to Donald Trump. And, you know, it's not just Donald Trump. People who donate oftentimes get a job as ambassador. This was true for Obama as well. But we have to put an end to this. If we truly believe in democracy, then we have to acknowledge that things like this are antithetical to democracy. Billionaires should not be able to buy elections. And we have to say that loudly and clearly so that way they get the message and stay the fuck out of politics. Beta male, not a beta male.